I mean, this is obviously one of the best uh, moments in, in hip hop just based off of all the fuels that we have. Let's get straight into the video. A deluxe edition of his album 1111, and it features a diss directed at Quavo on the song Freak. Chris <gasps> takes a shot at Quavo. Oh my God, no. And then Karuchi Tran after him. Mm. In 1942, cause I don't do no Quavo. Freak, if she like Casamigos, not Amigos. Listen. Mm -hmm. hey, that's, that's me and Chris recorded that a while ago, and it was too fire for him not to put on this album. That's what, that's what that was. That was so long ago, right? That was a long time ago. It was in, in 2017, Quavo actually started dating Karuchi, who had previously dated Chris Brown or whatever, right? And then they... Okay, that's very interesting. I did not know that Karuchi was dating Quavo before she even met Chris Brown. Uh, but this feud has very much been brewing, and Quavo responded very quickly. So let's hear what he has to say. You know, for those who don't remember or whatever, they got into like a little altercation allegedly. At a parking lot, right? Um, after the BT after the BT Awards, yep. backstage mm -hmm. actually. So um, and then the artist was recently just seen sitting together at an event, but they were awkwardly sitting together. They, that was placement. I think production did that. Yeah, Chris even said something about it. He was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. he said but something like, I, I'm, I have to be. It's for business. It's for it's business. Like, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Ain't got, he ain't gotta say nothing to me, and I ain't gotta say nothing to him. Listen, Quavo heard that, and you know all these artists got studios in their house. Mm -hmm. He slid down them steps. <laughs> <laughs> he made his song. He made his little diss, and then he came back at Chris. He did a bitch wrong and that a bitch gone. She posts with a thug. Yeah, with a thug. Caught a bitch wrong. She won't come home. Don't beat up. Don't beat up. Damn. That's that's crazy. He went straight at him. Talking about don't beat her up. Talking about she with a thug. She with a real one. She the one that chose up. She the one that basically came and chose me. She was at my party. So basically, Quavo to me did everything that we kind of would have loved if Drake would have done. Uh, as someone who, if y'all looking at. Y'all looking for Drake a Drake response from the Kendrick Lamar diss. Drake seamlessly don't have a pen because clearly he hasn't responded. Um, but you have someone like Quavo immediately responding within less than 24 hours. And to me, that shows that gives me a lot more respect for Quavo as an artist, as the pen, as someone who's can get that into that creative mode as quick as possible, especially when being threatened or being, you know, talked about and being lyrically beefed on. Basically, when that's what I'm saying, no diddy. Hey, when Michelle Obama said, uh, you, when they go low, we go high, <laughs> Quavo said, nope, I'm taking mm -mm, it to the floor. Mm -mm. Dang, we're going to break dance. Now. Not don't be the up. Damn. Chris Brown can't wait to fly them stairs. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. All right, so we, we, I guess we we, we on standby to see who, who else coming after that. Well, we know Chris going to say something. All right, Future and Metro Boomin, we still don't trust you album. That's out. And um, people online speculating, this is a few Drake disses. And um, on the song Show of Hands with A.S.A. Rocky, he mentions Drake being mad that he is now with Rihanna. They used to have old Drake that though, because Drake had some uh he had some he had some boss for them on uh for all the dogs. Yep. To me it's very disrespectful what Drake did and for all the dogs dissing Rihanna, who is a baby mom and, and you know, obviously has her children. Like it, to me it was very nasty and it gave it like y'all somehow like celebrate this dude for basically only coming at women and bashing women and like basically think so much that he's a woman that he's able to bash women like he does. So of course, ASAP Rocky would have replied like anybody who has a baby mama who's being dissed on by uh, an ex, right? So ASAP Rocky replied the way he replied. I mean, I personally would have wanted more bars and more aggression and more anger and more like, ain't no way in hell I'm gonna let somebody disrespect my baby mama the way Drake did in the song. And I don't give him like a good, a whole bunch of bars, but I guess ASAP Rocky just isn't that type of rapper. Um, you know what I'm saying? Um, as someone who is from the boroughs or is from New York in general, uh, you know, the birthplace, the Mecca of hip hop, how do you not have that fervor to go crazier on him? But I'll take the little bars that he did give him because at least he said something. Uh, cause there's no way you're going to just sit there and allow someone to just destroy your baby mama like that. And I feel like it's so disrespectful for a man to be for the girl, like how he went at Megan and he went at Rihanna, but he doesn't have no energy for Kendrick Lamar. Uh, that's not, that's not hip hop. And that's not a real man over there. Yeah. yeah. yeah he owed him that. I just want like ASAP to really like, uh, it, it wasn't believable to me. I don't even hear what the just was, but you know, yeah. <laughs> Basically, it made it seem like he smashed his, his baby mom before yeah. he had his first son. That's what it made it seem like. He was like, man, I've been oh. here, Rihanna. Like, this ain't like, you ain't. No, I don't think it was Rihanna. I think it was somebody other one. Play the oh my God. Other. Think about it. He said, I smashed Her? before you had your first son. <laughs> I believe it because ASAP <laughs> Rocky was definitely smashing a lot of porn stars for a while. Like I remember there was this, and it was like a certain time before he was with Rihanna where he was very much with like different popular porn stars doing interviews and, and stuff with them and talking about how he always dreamed of doing stuff with them. So I can imagine him basically going on a world tour, basically doing that. 
got to eat his baby think, mother. I think you're right. That's what it sound like. Lord. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, I thought it was like, I, I was hitting Rihanna before you even got shorty pregnant. Mm-hmm. Like, the other shorty. Oh, okay, He's, well, if he did, okay, that's cute or whatever. But anyway. <laughs> I could be wrong. I mean, you could be. We, we don't know, but whatever. On the first Sunday, on first Sunday, Future steals his flow back from Drake. Now, we know Future wrote Drake's song, Still in the Ways, on his album Views, so. And then I, I listened to that and I was like, okay, I like that. But I never heard Drake. This is Drake's. That future. Feel away, feel away, feel away. So that's like a subtle shot? Like future yeah. Like- I did not know. I did not know 100%. I thought, I thought obviously Future had a lot of influence on Drake, but I didn't know how much of stealing that Drake does. This is why I can't respect Drake. He steals too much. He takes too much from artists. And he has a whole sweatshop of writers, and he 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 manipulates artists to where he work with them, but then he's taking their whole entire style and then moving it on and taking it as his style, and then you know just completely adopting it and just stealing it. Like it's just I don't I can't respect someone who doesn't have a creativity to just go on to be there, be creative. You're taking other people's creative ideas and then adding it as yours. Come on, man. Like people know I, I like I that's ghost, me. I ghost wrote for Drake. That's me. Like I did that. Keeping the I mean? fuel on the ghost riding rooms. He did. I mean, it's just still like petty a little bit. It's mm-hmm. like, all right, they not these are not real disses. This is just mentions. Yeah, I'm, like. I'm still waiting for the real disses. The fact. Oh, about, you waiting for the real diss? Yeah, oh, because I got diss? one coming up. Okay. All right, so the weekend sung this nickel down. <laughs> yes, he sure did. <laughs> To me, that was a diss. Because to me, you guys got to understand, when I said in my last video, I'm, I'm, I was the first one to make the reaction saying before any of this dropped, I was saying The weekend will be the next one to come out and diss Drake. I have a whole video of reacting to Joe Budden, basically reacting to it. But within that reaction, I was saying that the person that's coming up next and that's going to be going crazy on Drake is The weekend because The weekend has been done wrong by Drake. You guys got to understand, The weekend just like Future, wrote a lot of Drake's catalog. But The Weeknd helped Drake in the most pivotal moment of his career, which was the Take Care album. The Weeknd wrote several songs to where these are some of the Drake's most popular and best songs that people love to sing along to, right? So it's interesting that they used to be OVO XO and now there's no XO next to OVO. You guys got to understand, the fact that Drake has to lose or has been losing so many counterparts next to him or that's been around him should let you guys know what type of entity you're dealing with. A lot of times you have to look at the person that's always in drama and beef as the one that's causing the drama and beef. A lot of people like to just look at why are they attacking? Why are they attacking? Well, why don't y'all look at the person that they're attacking for once? Why don't y'all look at a different shoe? You have about nine to 10 different artists finally getting their stuff off on this dude because of how foul he has done them, right? And when The weekend says, didn't sell my soul, or basically I didn't sell my life away or sign my life away, that's basically what happens when you sign the Drake. Look at Party Next Door catalog. Party Next Door hasn't even dropped his, his, his P4 album in four or five years, right? His last album was Party Mobile. And you guys understand, Drake has dropped several albums or two or three albums in between that time. Obviously, what you guys don't know is that he'll take the best songs that, let's say, Party Next Door make, and then he'll take those songs and put it on his next upcoming album. Meanwhile, Party Next Door has to go deeper in his creative bag to make something for himself after he's done gave Drake his best music. How does that elevate anyone? That's why nobody in OVO blows up past Drake. This you guys got to understand, Party Next Door should be way bigger. He should be on the level of the weekend in terms of impact for artists that has like the number one streaming artist in the world type energy. You know what I'm saying? Because he's that good. But he's to me so good enough to where he can do that for Drake and do his own. I respect Party Next Door. But my problem is the weekend, the weekend was basically the person that was doing it before PN, PND, right? And the weekend got off of that early, early on. And then look how his career catapulted right when he moved away from Drake. He became the, one of the number one or the best artists, right? You guys got to understand, Bryson Tiller, Bryson Tiller didn't sign to Drake. Drake offered him a chance to sign or wanted to sign him. Bryson Tiller declined. Did you turn down a deal from Drake or OVO? Yeah. How does that happen? Was um, Drake Drake? Huh? Was he Drake? Was he Drake? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, so so there's got to be this a is, reason to it. This is too late, Drake. Yeah, okay, so what? Damn. So what? Ha- wh- why so? Um, it just didn't make sense for me, to mm-hmm. be honest, at that time. 
you know, I was um, in a lot of different situations uh, prior to my success. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I just wanted what was the best for me. Look at Bryson Tiller just now dropped a recent great album that's really gotten his name back on the buzz list. Talking about he's back. He's basically made a comeback. He's basically, you know, what I'm saying he could have been creatively distraught or creatively owned by Drake. And then you guys got to understand this is what he does. If he doesn't make a feature with you, stealing your whole flow and your whole style and then adopting it and then moving on and then still taking your whole song with taking your whole flow on a different song of his own, then he'll make a whole he'll take your whole song and then put it on his album and then take the whole hook of it. Like, you know, what I'm saying he got sweatshops of writers. How can you respect that as an how can you all respect him as an artist itself? If you know that he's more of a puppet than someone that's actually creating art, you know, what I'm saying. And then he got the people who work with him the most mad at him you guys got to understand and these people is not taking it seriously because they don't understand how these this songs work and how subliminals work but metro booming is the producer of this album he created this album so it's not only are the people dissing drake on his album with which i might call subliminals you guys understand the producer itself is evoking this type of energy because metro booming doesn't at all like drake and metro booming worked with 21 savage and future You guys got to understand both who work with Drake. So you guys got to look at this from a deeper lens and just can't look at it from just the the pop media perspective. Let's get back into the video. Him talking like what Quavo and Chris Brown was doing was this. That was a diss. That was the R&B way of dissing. But no. Oh, he said, I'm glad I ain't signed my life away. I'm glad I signed my life away. Yeah, I'm just shooters on TikTok. So what? He was shooters on TikTok. Everybody on TikTok. He said, we never do the big talk. We never do the big talk. (laughs) The the fact that all these blogs online here, everything is a diss, lets you know everything you need to know. They're just a bunch of bloodthirsty, unhealed heathens who live for the drama because they know the drama gets them engagement. It all kind of sound like this too. I ain't gonna front, but Drake got to fight back now. Is he don't like? Come on, Jersey. Not ever somebody. Don't ever sing to me. Like, don't <laughs> sing to me, Listen, you know? the internet is trying to gas Drake up. The internet wants to, no, hear, not, get, they got to. The internet wants to hear Drake get active, so they saying everything is a Drake diss. Drake, stay focused. You got one out, and his name is Kendrick Lamar. They all got okay? shots. And you've been ducking that fight for a long time. Kendrick been bullying you for several years now, <laughs> and you've done nothing about it. Now, if you choose to ignore it, cool. That's on you. I'm not mad at it. I just want you to know we know who's been challenging you, and you know, too. It ain't yeah. the weekend. It's it ain't ASAP Rocky. Okay. It's all of them. It's Kendrick Lamar. Give him bars. Give him all no. bars in rap. No. Mm. You just need to bring back Celebrity Deathmatch. This would be a great time to bring back yeah, Celebrity that, Deathmatch. That could be, they would jump him, though. Yes, yeah, they would. They would jump him. He'd be by himself. be drinking himself by himself. Out, Kendrick would come out the Raptors like Sting. Remember Sting used to come out the Raptors? Mm. Dressed like the crow with the long black trench coat mm. on the face paint and the baseball bat. There. He used to sit up there. Yes. Anti-social yes. introverts. Yes. Just watching everybody. That's Kendrick right now. Kendrick is Sting in the Raptors. Just waiting. I got confidence in Jersey. Waiting. I got confidence. Of course, DJ Envy would have confidence in Drizzy or what he would call Drizzy, right? Uh, because DJ Envy looks up to, like he, you guys understand, Drake fits the mode for those people who look like a DJ Envy. Those people who are, uh, with the best way I can say it is biracial. The people who kind of look like they are filled with every every race right so he looking at drake like it's it's him so he that's what you guys gotta understand most of the people that are like let's say afro melanin or afrocentric we're really rooting for kendrick lamar because kendrick lamar represents that actual true black nature well the actual true pure blood energy the actual two black parent households the actually two like real black culture not just the culture that was given to us the actual real plight like he 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 embodies that and he has the hunger drive and will behind that and the brain and the smartness for us to even catapult him and use him as one of our top figures in our community to lead us in terms of that breath because the type of music that he make is of that type of energy so of course people like dj envy will look up to or speak fondly of drake as if like drake will beat kendrick drake in his worst day best day even if he was in his best 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 day ever would never ever beat drake uh kendrick lamar because kendrick lamar actually writes you guys understand writing is a gift that has to take time and time the more you work at it the better and better you are if you're taking time off writing and someone else is writing your catalog and your creativity your writing depletes over time because you haven't challenged yourself as a writer 
So that's why Kendrick will beat him off of the gates, off of just authenticity itself. And then on top of that, the flow choices and the rap styles and the fact that Kendrick Lamar is actually from Compton. He's actually from Section 80 type of energy, Section 8 type of energy. He's he's grew up in, in impoverished situations and worked his way up. Drake had a spoon, silver spoon, gold spoon because he's uh, with a Jewish mother. He had a gold spoon in his mouth since, the, since he was a child. He has no plight. He has no energy that he can get. He didn't start from the bottom. The bottom that he started from was Diddy. I'm pissing Drizzy. Well, I'm pissing do what? To rap. Yeah, he can rap, but he ain't got nothing on Kendrick Lamar. No, he's going to come back. I, I, I don't know when. He better Hopefully keep soon. He better keep chilling. In the you don't think so? <laughs> That's what you better keep doing. Nah. He got no mind. <laughs> yeah, we acting like Drake and got balls. Oh, Drake, is, Drake is phenomenal. Kendrick and Drake will be a phenomenal matchup. I'm just telling you, he don't want it with Kung Fu Kenny. That's why I, pre- I don't, he don't want it with Kung Fu Kenny. Mm. He can take ASAP. He can take the weekend. Y'all I mean, stop it. He man. can sing back. But Drake, y'all just, stop it. Drake is a smart championship fighter. Yeah. He know the match he should not take. Yeah, right he now. don't need. He's been to ducking come this back. match for several years. Yeah, he don't need- He's been ducking this match for several years. That is where he is right. You guys understand. Drake knows that he cannot stay up pen wise with someone who works on their craft as much as Kendrick Lamar. I'm trying to tell y'all, this is a sport. This is like someone who works on the game of basketball every single day. Kobe Bryant did an interview with Kendrick Lamar. You guys understand, Kobe Bryant basically compared himself subliminally to Kendrick Lamar. Like, I'm basically going to take your head off. There is no friends in this industry. You know what I'm saying? This is the energy that we're talking about. This is the energy that Kendrick Lamar, he wants to be the best. He is the best. He has the mentality of the best. And Drake knows that he can never beef with him. He's going to beef with women, and he's going to beef with other women all day, like Rihanna and Megan Thee Stallion. He got bars for them all day, but he has no bars for men. You know what I'm saying? And then even if he do, it's very subliminal. You know what I'm saying? Because he he couldn't continue to go after Pusha T. He couldn't continue to go after Joe Budden. He couldn't continue to go after the people that he's completely lost to in terms of just being an MC. You know what I'm saying? He can't really go at Kanye. So you guys got to understand, Drake is in a position to where all he can do is be quiet and make Instagram captions and posts. And when he do drop, it's not going to be lyrically as deep people think it is. But at the moment that you guys are realizing, the longer it takes, the more I feel like that he's using a whole bunch of ghostwriters to make his music right now to help him with this this song. He's probably making and hiring the best writers and making them on NDAs to where all they got to do is continue to drop bars and bars. And he's just going to pick the best bar out of each of them and use that for Kendrick Lamar. That's the difference between a phony and how Kendrick Lamar actually go in the booth and actually probably has a whole diss song, which I'm allegedly hearing already done after he made like that. So you guys understand, this is a difference between someone who writes their music and someone who doesn't. Future writes and, cr- and creates his music, and then you see someone like Drake, he doesn't. He even steals from Future. You guys got to understand, that stuff is sick. It's sick as an artist. It's sick as an MC to, to know that these people are literally cheating the game, cheating the system to get number one hits. That's so foul. Several. Any of them for that. We still don't Did people say that when he, had, when he, when he battled? Meek and him, Meek went back and forth. That, that was a good. Meek Mill was not someone that is on Drake's level or nobody level lyrically. That is a street rapper who can only rap about street stuff. He cannot diss nobody. We're not looking at Meek Mill for lyrics or lyricism. We're looking at Meek Mill for yelling and energy. Especially now, like you look at how Meek Mill was with Diddy and all of this stuff. I think they was originally beefing over Diddy, him and Drake, not Nicki. Because you guys understand, how do Drake get peed on by Diddy? Allegedly, how do you get even that situation? How are you using Young Miami and your Kiki Do You Love Me song as a sample? And you're sampling her voice talking about trade. Like she got a new boy and that boy trade. And trade is the definition of someone who's basically pretending to be a gangster, but is really uh, someone who's on the other side. And you guys understand, Drake is more of a cosplay person. He's pretending, he's acting. He started off as an actor, and then now his role is to pretend to be this rapper, right? But he's not. He's not an original rapper that you might think Amer- some Americans, obviously, the the creation or the energy that when Amer- an American person rap, you can tell they're American and they rap to understand the culture, the history. Let's say Kendrick Lamar. Right. Or even J. Cole about the history of it. Right. Even though he apologized and copped out and moved and did a whole KD move on Future's album. Either way, you guys got to understand Drake is a sellout. You know what I'm saying? He's a puppet. He's someone who doesn't have the energy, the skill or the writing capacity to compete with someone like Kendrick Lamar who writes their music. You will see once they both drop this song. I promise you remember this video that I will say this right now. Kendrick Lamar will 
almost to where it's violation, almost to where it's an assault type of lyrically demolish Drake. It was not even funny what he would do to him. And I think people need to really sit down and really think about who are we talking about? We're not talking about your average around the mill local artist or average around the mill mumble artist or the mumble rapper. We're talking about someone who legitimately works on their craft, works on their craft every single day. You know what I'm saying? So much to where they pen in their lyricism has reached an all time high. And so much to where when they drop the one verse, one verse, it can shake up the whole entire hip hop industry, the whole entire hip hop world to where now it's the Royal Rumble to now everybody is at war. Fight for him. And he won that. Then he lost the pusher. All right. And he, he don't want it with Kendrick. Okay. And if he do want it with Kendrick, then he need to show and prove. But if he chooses not to, I'm cool on that too. But I just want him to know that the op is Kendrick Lamar. Well, that, well, Kendrick said he lost to Meek? No, I did not say that. Oh, Nobody heard that at all. Come on now. <laughs> Nobody heard that. Come on. Kendrick is the one that wants to fight. Kendrick has been challenging him for several, several years. Okay. All right. Well, maybe he's going to do it on his time, right? He's not going to listen to your social media antics. and He's going to do it on his time when he wants to do it. I'm not mad at that either. Okay. Leadership. You see, DJ Envy would cape that type of energy. That's a punk, right? Punks are the only one that are talking about Drake can respond whenever he wants. Drake can do whatever he wants. Oh, he's the greatest. All that. Only punks would think like that. And that's why punks aren't rappers. That's why punks, we don't listen to punks opinion. Because y'all don't represent the energy of hip hop. MCs act like they don't know. It's Karis one telling all MCs that they don't they better act like they know who's the best. You know what I'm saying? So they they did like like you can't just sit there and tell me that someone gotta just passively aggressively be in captions and you're oh you're okay with that. Someone just sitting there waiting to drop a diss song. You're sitting there waiting for someone to use their art and their creativity, and they're saying they're the best for years. And when somebody who's able to stand up and fight with you one v one, now you're telling me they can take their time on it? No, that is some punk stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's why I'm that's why I respect Quavo. I even respect the weekend and ASAP Rock. Everybody who went on and just let off their steam. Because you guys understand that's what real creativity is. It's being able to create when you need to create. When you can't create, you need to wait a long time so that everybody else can create for you. And then you pick and choose which one is the best. Because if you just didn't wrote your stuff, people wouldn't like it because they'll be like, oh, he he suck. You know why he suck? Because he wrote that. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Drake is just a facade. He's a pretender. He gets people that is like that. Party next door around him is like that musically. So what is he going to do? Take his catalog, take his music and make some of the best songs, R&B songs that you guys might have heard. Same stuff with The Weeknd when he took the Take Care songs, those R&B songs, Shot For Me and stuff like that. Those are some of the most best songs I've ever heard, right? But whole time, The Weeknd wrote it. So who am I listening to? I'm listening to The Weeknd. I'm listening to how The Weeknd felt. Drake is just cosplaying, acting out the role and the script of what was somebody else wrote. Because even as an actor, he was already reading off of somebody's script. So that's basically what we have all for you guys here today. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to keep you guys here too long. I just want to do a quick reaction to basically The Breakfast Club breaking down the, the beefs and stuff like that. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy. Click the like, comment, share, and subscribe button. Let me know how you guys feel. You know what I'm saying? Let me know how you guys feel about the state of hip hop. Because to me right now, hip hop is at an all time high in terms of a lot of people are contributing to lyricisms that people might seem as a diss, but to me it's more of just a lot of people shedding and letting off the actual steam about someone to them ha who have done them wrong. This isn't, these are the biggest artists in the world talking about the the one who continues to claim himself as the number one artist. You guys gotta understand, Future is dissing him the whole entire time. Every verse is a Future diss to Drake. And you guys don't understand how serious this is. This is someone who worked with him, who stayed in the studio with him. Drake sat there and stole his whole flow and his whole everything. Future is taking his stuff back. Future is finding himself again too, as a as a, as a mentally and stuff like that. Like he's, you could tell he's been more introspective in this album. He's been more of himself because he got away from whatever that Drake thing is. That Drake thing is a thing around him, and then he also likes to take people's girls and stuff like that to feel how the other man feels. Like it's it's like. It's very much Diddy energy, and it just reminds me of Diddy. That's why it would make sense to where Diddy would allegedly have peed on him because he just seems like someone who is like a 
like someone someone who's playing like a, a character. And that's why even in J. Cole bars and uh, Red Leather, he's talking about, you know, like the fake, like I'm not trying to be a thug or whatever, like the fake thugs or whatever. That's basically him saying that he's not trying to be like Drake. You know what I'm saying? He's just a conscious rapper who like, who like, you know, smashing girls and stuff like that. So he basically is setting himself apart from whatever that Drake thing is. And he doesn't want to be linked all the way to like that Drake thing. Because he's seen what it is up close to be around someone who's pretending to be somebody, someone who's faking to be a somebody. You know what I'm saying? As someone who feels comfortable enough to diss women all day. Drake, I have lost all respect for you, like all, all respect for you. And I hope Kendrick Lamar really sets the tone and really breaks you down as an artist and just destroys your career because you're someone who built your career off of a facade and a lie. And the one thing we hate especially me is a deceiver. I hate deception and you've deceived us for so long. Now it's time for the false prophets to fall and the real prophets shall rise. The true prophets shall rise. All the people who actually put work and time into work to be successful, y'all are going to rise. All the people who use other people to become successful and use groups and all of this other stuff, elbowing with people just to become successful, but really doesn't have no true talent within their own creativity and what they've done. They're all going to fall. And that's the time and the age that we're living in because this is the year of truth. And all of the truth shall be shall come to light. You guys got to understand, this is all coming to hip-hop. This is why hip-hop is basically being, it's always has been the, hip-hop has always shown you what the world is today. Like, it shows you what type of energy it is today based off of what the hip-hop content is. Back in the day, it was a lot more cerebral, a lot more about black pipe, because at that time, that's the energy that was of the world. Then it got to aggressive gangster rap because of the cocaine that came into the systems and everything that came into the system. Then it got dancey. Then it got rapidy again. Then it got mumble rap. And then it got uh girly rap now it's fingernail paintings now it's girly stuff because the world is like that so now it's competitive now the, the fake shall fall and the real shall rise that should tell you about the world right now it's the cat williams everything cat williams said in the interview is basically the time and era that we're living in right now this is the year of the truth everybody gotta wake up even into your favorite artist who is a false prophet